programming is a good idea to know about computers. I mean, uh, if you really write big programs, uh, you need to know limitations of computers. Okay, uh, I will describe that like how much memory is there, what is the computing power. So, so it's it's relevant. I mean, I, I don't know. You may know already about it, but let's review it. In fact, I will ask questions on this uh, in the homework. So let's look at some of the stuff and it's really changing very fast. I can't cope up with uh, what is happening in the processes. The speed is increasing every year. Uh, so if you are in the supercomputing sector, then you need to be up to date. Okay. So we'll see, I mean this my data is slightly old, uh, but it's rapidly changing. Okay. So let's first focus on desktop computers. That too is changing very fast, but it will give you an idea. In fact, the design remains the same. The Units are getting more and more powerful. Okay, so the components of a desktop computers are like the computation unit, the CPU, a memory, and input output. Okay, so these are this is von Neumann structure. Von Neumann kind of thought about this idea. Uh, in our brain, uh, these two are in fact uh, he segregated these functions. Uh, these three units. In fact, you will see that there are different units in a computer, but our brain does it in for all three in, in somewhat same place here. right? Of course, we get data from various places of the body, but uh, memory and CPU is, is done by neurons. Okay? So, it is not clear uh, how we do it in computation in the brain, but anyway this is the design of a computer by basically von Neumann. Uh, some people say Turing had similar ideas, but the design of Turing is was classified, so we do not know much about Turing's. Well, we know much about something about it, but Neumann gets von Neumann gets the credit, but Turing had done similar work. Okay, so, if you look at inside the computer, which I think you should, so you see something like motherboard, okay. This is a motherboard, okay. So, uh, CPU sits here, here. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a fan which cools the CPU, so there will be a fan which will sitting on, on top of it. Uh, there are clever design to take the heat out. It's very hot. In fact, typically it's around 60 degrees, 50, 60 plus degrees te temperature. So you have to cool it; otherwise, it'll just burn. Uh, so this is a processor, CPU. So I said processing unit. Most of the computer, well, all computers computation is done here. Then this is called RAM, random access memory. Okay, RAM. So these are RAM slots, but the RAM looks like this, and we put. Uh, quite a few of these uh, units. Okay, this, this this units. These units actually this is weak, I think. So quite a few of these units are placed here, right here. Okay, so uh, that is uh, placed there. So this is where the, your data sits, live data. Uh, there is something called hard disk. That's also memory. This one hard disk. And that hard disk is connected from the CPU, uh, from this motherboard, to, so to somewhere else. Okay, so uh, so this is memory. These two are memory. So uh, CPU is here, memory is here, and interface is there. Are a lot of connectors. I don't want to get into that part, but there are a lot of connectors which will connect to input output, uh, graphics cards, and so on. Okay, so you don't need to know all of it for this course, but it's interesting how how it's evolving. So let's look at a little bit more. So it turns out nowadays motherboards come with not only single CPU but you can place many CPUs. So there was one place CPU sitting here. You can have two slots. So multiple slots. In fact, you can put something like eight CPUs in modern motherboards, eight of them. So these are there right now two CPUs sitting here, and there are connectors to RAM. Actually, unfortunately, it's not working. So this is a RAM connection. Uh, that is also RAM. So this CPU is connected to this RAM, but they'll talk with each other with this interface. Okay. Now uh, we also have connection. The PCI is connecting to other hardware like hard disk. So this is the present design. You populate more and more CPU. That's what we are going towards. Put more power in a motherboard. Now, if you look at a single CPU, so remember there are two CPUs. Now, if you look at inside a single CPU, there are cores. These are called core. 
core is full C full processing unit within. So, multiplication, addition, data transfer, all these are done by this co single core has power of this. So, you can think of Raman, you know, so it has 10 heads. So right now, this has 4 heads, ok. So, this, so uh, each head can do its function. So, now there are CPUs which has 15 cores, uh, they are designed for 60 cores by Intel, Intel already has 60 core CPU. Uh, if you look at the GPU cards, you heard of GPU, no? NVIDIA GPU that has 2500 or 2000 this cores, okay, 2000 heads. So, it is extremely large number of cores, that is why it can do things fast. Uh, there is something called cache, if you are doing computing, serious computing, they need to know about, so this is also memory, but the memory sits very close to the CPU. So, more the distance, longer time will take to access. Why? Because all of them roughly move the speed of light. So, the longer distance delta t is L by c speed of light ok. So, closer you are faster it is. The present bottom leg, uh, present bottleneck is the memory access. CPUs have gone very fast, become very fast, I will tell you some numbers, but the problem is the RAM which is slow ok. Hard disk is well, there is a hierarchy, hard disk is slowest then RAM and then cache. Now, this is called L 3, there is something called L 1 and L 2 cache too ok. So, there are hierarchy of caches, so some are fast, some are not so fast, but they sit very close to the core ok. Now, if I put more and more data in cache then my computation will be faster ok. So, basically uh, if your grocery store is close to your home then you can get things fast, but it is far away then it takes longer time. Okay, so, it is precisely similar design ok, you bring it closer and closer and put more storage in cache ok. So, you can look at the size, so this die size this whole size is 160 millimeter square. So, how much is CPU die size? So, like if you take the square root 13 centimeter by 13 centimeter, so this is the size ok and how many transistors are sitting there 1.48 billion. Uh, sorry, 1.4 billion. Okay, so huge number of transistors are packed in that unit. Okay, it's amazing that we could reach this kind of complexity. Okay, now this is in a single layer. Now the idea is to put more layers, and then of course connect it. So that's another direction people are working on. So, so this is roughly. I mean, of course, you can do full cores on CPU itself. But for us, we need to know how many cores, uh, cache. This also some of it. I am trying to inspire you that okay, there is more to computing than Python programming. Okay, Python programming is only a single step. You just get. You are like a kid, you know. So you have to grow from that point. So uh, we worry about these aspects for uh, efficiency in the code. Now let's look at some estimate how fast it can compute. So, there is a there is a clock, every computer has a clock ok, clock is like heart ok. So, it will synchronize various processes in the machine. So, in fact, every clock cycle they say ha you do this, 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 this work. So, it is all synchronized by a clock, this is a very important aspect, but how many of floating point operations? Floating point is real numbers, real add, real multiply, how many operations can it do? It turns out it can do in the modern machines can do 8 operations per cycle ok. This is a good number to remember 8 operations. So, at additions or well it is also complicated it can probably possibly normally do 4 multiplication and 4 addition it is arranged in a pipeline. So, it basically moves like assembly line, uh, but this again I will not discuss, but it just that it can do 8 operations per cycle. Now, how many cycles does it have per second? Typically, it is 2.5 gigahertz, some are 3, 3.5, but nothing at 5 ok. Uh, this is a limitation, this is coming from uh, microphysics quantum limitation in fact. If you increase the clock speed, things are just not working out ok, the power requirement becomes more of there are lot of issues. So, there is a we reached a bottling in terms of clock speed, there is no breakthrough in increasing the clock speed beyond 5 gigahertz. 
So how many operations can it do per second? It can do 20 giga flops. Flop means floating point operations. FL is floating. Op is operation. Okay. So it can do 20 giga flop per second, each core. Okay, that's a huge number. I mean, I I can probably do one multiplication in one minute. Okay, so this kid can do this many operations per second. Now, how many cores a desktop computer has? Typically, you are getting quad core machine, no? Quad core desktops or laptops. So quad means four. So it has four cores per process per processor. So if you have a, desktop, a laptop with a quad core processor, it can do 80 giga flop. So 80 g for giga floating point operations per okay now uh, so th but it turns out it is not enough for computing which we need now for advanced computing this is really small okay uh, we will work out some numbers for slightly bigger problems in in, in future but but it is huge power I mean this is really a big power it turns out you can buy workstations which are which can do more than desktop so there's a next class is called workstation. Okay, workstation will have better processor. You can put eight of them, eight CPUs. In in laptops, you can't put more than two. So it'll heat up, you know, and your motherboard is not. It will of course cost more. Okay, so everything if you more need more, you need to pay more. So workstation more RAMs, it can go up to 15 cores. So I put six, eight, ten. So we can also go up to 15. But this is not enough for big compute computations. So I want to do weather prediction. This won't be enough. Okay, or if I want to uh, simulate the DNA, uh, this is not enough. Okay. So let's look at memory. So I'll just give you some idea about memory. Uh, again, very preliminary idea. So uh, here is all based on binary, classical computers. So it has zero and one. So two two states, zero and one. So every storage or computation will be in binary. Quantum computers, if you know a bit of it, it has many states. Okay, so that is a big plus for quantum computation. Uh, but classical computers are zeros and ones. Uh, so this is another number byte. I did not mention it, but one byte is 8 bits. So instead of 8, you just say one byte. Uh, typical uh, PC has 4 to 8 GB, okay, it depends. I mean, I do not know how many have 16 GB RAM in your laptop, that will cost more money, okay. So, you normally you keep it 4 or 8, okay, 8 is already rich, rich uh, laptop. Uh, PC also means laptops are now as powerful as a PC. So, this one word, I mean, this memory is also evolving very rapidly. So, this called DDR is double data rate, but the names are changing almost every year. Now we have this fast switch, solid state RAM, solid state hard disk. Okay, so that doesn't have spinning parts, so that's quite fast. In fact, RAM and solid state device, solid state hard disk are roughly similar speed. Okay, so it's a, but RAM is faster definitely. So please remember the difference. Huh? Hard disk is outside. I didn't show you. If you hard disk will be a, a disk of this size which will be not on the motherboard, it will be somewhere else and RAM will be sitting on the motherboard. So uh, if you are closer to the CPU, it is faster. So uh, these are different names. So as I said, uh, this technology is changing. So SD RAM is uh, another new name for faster RAM. So we, I will not discuss that, but just to tell you that things are changing very fast. So uh, we need to know a lit little bit about how much storage is required for each unit of data. So character, so if I write a text, no? so like your SMS you are doing it, so each character is stored in the computer and it requires one byte, 8 bits. So you can see how much, how many uh, characters can I store in a byte. You know this stuff, no? this is school stuff. So if you have one, one bit then 0 and 1 only two choices. If you have two bits, then have four choices, 0, 0 to 1, 1. So if you have eight, eight bytes, eight bits, then I have 2 to the power 8 options. And 2 to the power 8 is 256. 
okay, these numbers again is, is, is easy. So, uh, characters we have 256 of them. So, A, B, C, D there are numbers for each of them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H like that for new alpha numerics dollar and so on. But nowadays in at least in the browsers we have 2 bytes for a character because multilingual. No, so, Hindi also we store as a number you, you are not storing as a font that will be too expensive to port. You understand you not you don't want to send a uh, image of uh, uh, no, so you are sending a code for a uh, image will be more it will take more longer uh, bigger data. So, because of all this different language so now characters are stored as 2 bytes. So, 16 so 2 power 16 characters and 2 power 16 is how much ok I will tell you a number 2 power 10 is 1000 ok you can just work it out. So, 2 power 16 will be 2 power 6 into 2 power 10 64000. So, you can store 64000 characters in modern um, because of this called unicode ok. So, unicode is 2 characters um, integer in python it will be any integer any length. So, you can store 64 digits whatever digits you like python will adjust its length or how much bytes are required to store it. But it is also important to know what photon or c does c will be assigning 4 bytes for a character uh, for integer ok. Uh, so, 4 bytes integer will store maximum and minimum. So, this is a max. So, this is going to be 2 to the 31 ok uh, because 1 will be sign bit. So, 1 is reserved for sign and remaining is 2 to the 31. So, you get minus 2 to the 31 to 2 to the 31 and this little bit of minus 2 to the 31 minus 1 ok. So, that is a bit technical issue, uh, but you can store up to 2 billion the number is cannot be exceeding 2 billion for integer ok. If your number exceeds that it will cause errors ok. So, this is important if you are doing C programming size of a number especially when you have big data size uh, then your data index itself will exceed this number. My array is sometimes 2000 cube ok like if I am trying to simulate weather then my data will be 2 billion uh, sorry uh, 2 2000 cube each direction. So, how many point data will be there 2000 cube will be 8 billion 8 billion etc. ok. So, you have to be careful what is a your index I mean if you have done bit of programming you know that array index has to be integer right. So, I need to say I cannot use this integer this is one common source of error ok. So, I have to use long int this is again part of C uh, you have to use long int which allows you to use 8 bytes and 8 bytes lets you have 2 power 63 as your limit for maximum number this is big number no data size will be at least at, at present will be in this for arrays. Boolean in C stored says 0 and 1 in python it, it will I think it takes 4 4 bits, uh, but in C it will take 1 byte is inefficient you need only 1 bit, but the store is 1 byte. So, if you want to use Monte Carlo uh, Ising spin. So, you can pack lot of spin in a single byte right I mean you can store 60 well how many 256 Ising spins. So, we have to I mean you have to program wisely you know you have to program in a more intelligent way if you want to use that, but C will this I am basically telling what C. C also has float uh, ok. Now, this is for real numbers now python real numbers again it can be of any size I will. So, these are some differences between C and python ok you should know this when you are writing in python, uh, but uh, it will adjust it will allocate whatever is required, but in C the real numbers are 4 bytes. Now, I will tell you a little bit later about how is this stored. Uh, so, the maximum with the real float so, in, in C is called float C float and it you can go only up to 10 power 38 ok uh, nothing beyond 
So, you will be error if your number is beyond 10 to 38 or below 10 power minus 38. So, Planck constant can be stored, but uh, if you do Planck constant squared error right Planck constant squared will be 10 power minus 68 and error. Okay. Uh, so, you have to be careful what, what, what operations you are doing. Uh, nowadays is standard to use double. So, double has 8 bytes and 8 bytes can go up to 10. So, E is you know this notation E, E is 10 power. Okay. So, 10 power minus 308 to upper side is 10 power 308 and what is precision? So, with float I can store up to 7 digits. So, precision only is 10 power minus 7. Any number which is lower than I mean you need precision more than 7 digits problem with, with real with float, but with double you can go up to 15 digits. Okay. So, uh, 15 digit accuracy is allowed in C programming with double. If you want more sometimes you need more precision then you need to write program yourself there are packages which will allow you to use 16 bytes okay, double of double but that will be standard well there will be some other function you have to program yourself. Is that clear I mean this is something which we need to know I will I will let you I mean I will tell you a little bit about how python handles it uh, today only I mean we will reach there. So, let us do some estimate. <coughs> so, typical desktop has 4 to 8 gigabytes. Okay. Please look at your info on uh, in, in your uh, laptop, figure out I mean you, you should not be using it as just like a dumb machine you know you should know what is there inside. So, how much memory is there it will come about computer it will come. To save a matrix 2D matrix uh, of 1000 cube. So, you are saving a matrix which is not uncommon a thousand n squared uh, each n is 10, 10 cube. Uh, so, what is the data size required? This will be stored in a RAM your memory. So, it will be how many data is there n squared. So, 10 plus 6, but each of them require 8 bytes. So, 8 million. Okay. So, 8 million is the size of your array. Okay. So, it will just occupy that much RAM. If you are using, using float, then it is going to take 4 million. Now, it is not uncommon, we have programmed on this array. So, 4000 cube. Okay. Now, how much is the RAM required? So, how many data points are there? 4. So, 4096, you can approximate to 4000. Okay. So, 4 cube is 64. So, 64 billion. So, this is 64 billion that is your data this 64 billion. Now, each of them is 8 bytes double. So, it requires 1 quarter terabytes okay. that is impossible in a in a laptop or a desktop computer. So, you need a supercomputer for this application. Okay. So, uh, immediately you can see that uh, if I want to do realistic simulation then you need bigger machine. I hope it is clear to everyone. Okay. So, uh, but laptop is also powerful, but you can do your course project with your, your, your laptop, but uh, if you want to publish a paper new result we need to move on to bigger machine. Okay. So, I will tell little bit about this and in this course we will not discuss this. I did offer a course last semester, but if you want then of course, there is a uh, whole things to a whole new things to learn how to handle HPC. So, I will just give you a very brief idea about what the computers are, how much power does it have. Okay. Uh, the basic idea now I mean there are different ways to make supercomputers. The one design which is most popular. So, there are again the different some of them are not popular they are very fast, but they are not popular uh, also cost cost is a big 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 issue. So, the present popular design is connect many machines and make them work together. Okay, it's just a, I mean, more more students get more work out. That's that's about it. It's not that you are making one student very 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 smart or genius or something. You just say, well, 
every student will work equally and you get work out. So, that is the idea of present machine. So, you are basically desktop computers connected together. It is not desktop because if you want to put desktop in a room, how many can you pack in this room? I mean I could pack maybe 1000, right? I mean you just fill up everything, maybe few thousand. Uh, that is not good enough. Okay, I will show you the numbers. We are able to pack 1 million processors in a machine. Okay. So, uh, so, the designs basically is you pack more and more CPUs in a in a clever way. Uh, it is a good idea to see our uh, computer center. So, there is a room where uh, this big super computer is housed. Uh, you cannot see inside, but you can basically see the racks. So, uh, each rack has many processors. Okay. I do not have a picture here, but you can easily see in Google uh, how does it look. Okay, so, the IT Kanpur HPC, HPC means high performance computing. People do not use the word supercomputer anymore, uh, this is more common HPC, but which is means the same. Okay. Um, so, uh, this word called nodes. So, each node is like a, uh, it has more processors, each node. So, each node is like a, you are, you can think of one motherboard sitting there with some more stuff. So, it is like a box, this, this thick. Okay. Uh, in fact, the size is like this, like a diary. That's called a node. So there are 901 nodes in our machine here. Now, if they are working together, you need to make them talk with each other. If they don't talk, work cannot proceed. Right? I mean, you may be uh, very smart, but you need to talk with other person if you want to work jointly. So there is a uh, connector. This called switch, which is infiniband switch. Again, is a technical name. There are lots of switches. Uh, most popular is called infiniband switch. Uh, and so, how much is each processor within a node? So, within each node, there are two processors sitting there. Okay. Now, I hope you understand. I told you each processor many cores, many heads. Okay. But there are two processors. So, we have two Xeon Phi processors. So, two CPUs and this name called IV bridge. Uh, so, each of them has 10 cores, 10 cores. Okay. So, 10 head is really Raman, the sun. Okay. So, 10 into 2 is 20. So, 20 cores in each node and it has 128 gigabytes of RAM, like this is, is quite huge compared to your laptop. So, each node has these specs and the 901 of them. Some of them master node has less cores. So, overall if you see the numbers, we got 17,000 okay, or 18,000 that many cores in our HPC, which is a big number. This machine is ranked, was ranked, now it is slipping down 118 in the world. Okay. So, this is called top 500.org, so it was 118th in June 2014. Now, how many operations can it do? So, again the same numbers I told you before. So, each core can do 20 giga flop. Okay, 20 giga floating mode operations per second. So, multiply 20 into 20 cores, right? I said 20 cores in each node, and there are 901 nodes. So, it comes out to be 360 teraflop. Okay. So, uh, so, tera is 10 to 12 or 0.3 peta, 10 to 15 is peta. So, 0.3 times 10 to 15 operations per second, and how much power does it take? it takes 370 kilowatt okay is 0.3 megawatt so megawatt is the power basically for a for a village full village uh, or iit this will consume in something like one quarter or one fifth of the full power okay so it is a big problem how to make it efficient green supercomputers uh, so too much of a power and how much ram does it have it has a ram of 115 terabytes and hard disk 500 tb Okay, so, it is a, it's a big, big machine. Uh, problem is we do not have programmers, you know, so who can use the full machine. So, you need to write a program which will use all the machine. Now, it is not easy. It should be efficient program, I mean you cannot say well, I mean I write something and put it there. So, you need to make efficient program and uh, it is a, it's a big task. So, let us look at other machines. So, top 10 HPC systems, I did not write the site, you can just look at top 500 top500.org you see more information 
on 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 these machines okay so i'll just show you the top machine uh, where is it from you know top machine china china has a top most machine so i hope this is visible this is like not very clear so uh, china has a top most machine that number 1 and how many cores does it have so don't worry about inside what is written there is a 3 million okay so 3 million is a big number so 3 million cores sitting there what is the peak rating of this is 33 petaflop so this is in tera t flops so it is 100 times faster than our machine now how much power does it take the last column 17 megawatts okay so that's a power so it's a huge power i mean you need a basically a generator a power station not generator power station for this machine so uh, that's where in fact that's another saturation uh, how to make machines which are fast but consume less power and the candidates are gpus are one strong candidate or your mobile chip so people are building super computers using mobile chips so mobile chip there's a limitation is power so you can so the, it is already there it's a super computer using mobile chips okay uh, there are other machines uh, like uh, this is second is us 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 so us is a leader in terms of number of machines so there are 200 from us china has 100 they are really putting lot of effort in super computing india is 11th i marked just for information there is another machine sitting in saudi arabia that's where we run so we have access to this machine and it's very fast this machine is has uh, 0.2 million cores and it is 5 petaflop so number is in india there is only one machine which petaflop rating which is in isc 1.2 petaflop okay is the same machine but less cores so this is about super computers so i need to talk little bit of software this again i will not enforce that you should use linux but you should really use linux as a i'm this is a what's called cautionary warning no you can smoke but smoke kills so similarly you should use linux that's good for you okay but if you were like not wanting to change it's okay i mean you can do python programming in windows so i'll tell you which package to install but the strong i mean if you really want to uh, do something good then you should do use linux or mac mac is linux huh? mac, is, mac is unix so this machine is unix okay so i should not preach without practicing so this is unix so the thing which you need to know unix you also need to do a bit of tutorial not part of the course i can't do it but uh, there are nice tutorials to get to know unix just for a user so you need to know what is the directory structure shell shell is so this this is a operating system sitting at the bottom operating system okay so hardware without a program is nothing okay you can't you can't use it so program which runs makes this hardware alive is called operating system but operating system programming is very difficult so it's i can't do it okay so the computer science they are very smart people who program the operating system so this is called kernel linux kernel okay if you use the word kernel but kernel is those things are not easy so there is a layer above the kernel so there are layer realities of different layer levels so there is a this is called shell shell will talk to the user is it clear so there is a there is a person boss sitting inside who is the kernel but the secretary is sitting outside which is a shell so you talk to the secretary you really can't talk to the boss well i mean you can but then you require some special permission so shell is what we need to we need to talk and shell has these commands i mean if you know bit of unix so or some of you are probably experts of unix okay so ls for listing directory structure a cd change directory so these are the commands you need to know a uh, tutorial you basically you need to spend maybe 3 hours and you can get to a big reasonable user of unix so uh, this one site i'll post it in a in a website well i'll probably do something so that you can get access to my ppts um, and you need editor okay for using the cc machines you need editor uh, is unix linux machine cc machines so the editor i recommend is gedit okay so that's part of linux there are other editors vi vi is not so good i mean again it's like a cryptic vi or vim um, i recommend gedit okay but please get used to it otherwise you can't do your homework 
so you need to use uh, one of the editors. And uh, I think this slide is probably ending. So that is one. So Linux is one. You, well, Linux derives itself from Unix. Okay, uh, Unix was a very clever design. It's one of the best thing which happened in last century. Okay, best including science and engineering. Okay, Unix is a very clever fundamental design done in Bell Labs, but it was made for workstations or super well basically workstations, IBM and so on. It was 70s. Okay, so but in 90s. Uh, there is a Travos, Linux Travos, he could port it to desktops in 90s. So, desktop had less RAM. So, actually operating system sits in the RAM. So, it will take space of the RAM. Okay. If you do not have enough RAM then hard luck, you cannot put in Unix. Unix is uh, uh, it's a good OS. Okay. Now, I will not tell you why, why it is a good OS, uh, it does not have virus, it is, it is secure. So, all that features are there. Uh, so, he could push, push the subsection of Linux, Unix to desktop and that is called Linux. Okay. So, Linux is Unix for desktops. But it turns out uh, it has evolved. Now, supercomputers also have Linux installed there okay. and there are probably 500 different variations of Linux, Unix, uh, Linux and some are useful for some, some people like some. So, uh, the most popular is Ubuntu. Right. So, Ubuntu is safe, easy, not probably the best, but for it is like Windows actually, this is it's, uh, easy. So, the other OS are Windows, which I do not recommend, and OS X is for Mac, but it is Unix based, okay. it has a layer above it. So, the layer is useful that I it makes my life simple, but it is based on Unix. Uh, there is another operating system which is coming up in a big way is mobile OS. So, I must say that uh, the iOS is for Mac or for iPhone and uh, so this is Apple OS for mobile and this is Android is for by Google, uh, this for for other phones okay. and the window, uh, window is also has its own OS, uh, the third one I did not write it here. Okay, so, uh, programming languages. So, we need to know at least uh, roughly what are available. There, well, of course, the languages are probably more than 100. Okay. So, you need to know some, uh, uh, at least I do not know the language names of many of them, but they are just huge number and they are each of them has their speciality. But as a physicist, we need uh, we need to know. Well, I need. I don't know uh, Java. I simply don't know Java. Okay, but I should know what Java is for. So, so these three are quite popular among faces. Uh, the Fortran was traditional. In fact, it is one of the first languages in computers. So, you need to know one of the three. Okay, if you want to do computing, you need to know one of the three. Uh, we will not do it in this course. The reason is to know this, uh, you need something like 20 lectures. Okay. A Python you will see that is basically 3 lectures I can communicate, you can become big, really good user of Python, it is quick. Uh, but C has its own uh, the barrier. So, uh, these are called compiler languages. So, I did not mention what is compiler. So, it will take this text and it will convert into zeros and ones in one shot. So, after you write a program you need to compile, then you need to execute it. So, that is why it is slightly longer process, there will be compiler errors and there will be a runtime errors. So, error while compiling itself there will be typos, no? some typographical error. So, it will catch, compiler will catch Then once you succeed to compile then you will execute then you will get some errors. Uh, so, it is a, it's a bit lengthy process. So, uh, for first language, I think many of you undergrads know C, right? I mean, C was the language. So, some people know here C. So, in fact, I did not give them advantage. So, Python will bring everybody, well, not that, I did not give advantage. Python, people who do not know uh, will be able to, and people who know C is Python is useful to know. It is not that it is useless. It is, in fact, it is the language uh, which is being used 
I think I mentioned in the last class that around 20 percent US universities are using Python as the first language and I am pressing our CS department to move to Python for the first year. So, other languages which are called interpreted languages. So, Python is one language, uh, MATLAB is another one. So, MATLAB quite a few people know. So, MATLAB, so I will, I will show you ok, I will, I will just run um, Python which very similar to MATLAB. So, like what you did 2 plus 3 is 5, you can plot, you can do sin of 5 or sin of x. So, all that you can do with MATLAB and Python, but it is a interpreted language means as soon as you enter it will run. So, we do need to compile separately. So, as soon as you enter the computer compiles it without you knowing it, is that clear? Uh, so, you do not have to compile send a command for compilation. So, it will do compilation line by line. So, that is why it is quick for programmer, programmer can simply say well I am lazy I just do line by line I just do not want big program to be written. So, it is quick, so that is why it is fast to code. So, uh, interpreted languages are slower than compiler languages because compiler I told in the last class is, is a very intelligent program which will make a efficient object code, efficient zeros and one code which will give you result which is. So, weather prediction is never written in python, you can write a prototype, but not in the real with, with real code very little too slow. So, typically this language this program can be 100 times faster than python codes, 100 times okay. People are of course, working to make python fast. I will I will tell you a bit later maybe towards the end how can you make python fast, but the number of lines we write in python the average line is 10 times slower, lower. So, this code could be 1000 line this is only 100 lines ok. So, thus the plus and minus of these two languages ok. So, this is finishes intro to computers and uh, I think you need to know it is not that you simply get to uh, programming. So, now let us get to a bit of uh, starting to program ok. So, I am starting python now ok. So, we have 7 minutes. So, the first thing is so python you can so it has so uh, python you can install in different ways. So, one thing is to there are lot of python is not a single program ok single package it comes with lot of libraries. So, plotting is a different library, uh, linear algebra package is different, uh, there is package for various applications ok, I will discuss some of it uh, in due time. So, but I recommend that you can install anaconda ok. So, this is a package, uh, how many of you succeeded to install this? Great, very good. So, just go to the site anaconda dot com I think ok, just say anaconda python you will get to the site. And install python 2 ok, not python 3. So, I think it is 2.7 is the current one for for a download. Python 3 is slightly different, but there will be problems. So, the syntax is slightly different ok. So, it is older, but uh, things will be consistent lot of. So, the first well basically python 2 ok. So, it is much easier to use uh, rather than installing separate packages. So, scipy, pylab, so you do not want to install ipython, so uh, it will do in one shot. 